Matt, tell us about LiDAR, what it brings to a sensor suite driver assist system as opposed to what a system with just camera or camera and radar together might, might provide. Yeah, so LiDAR, LiDAR is all about 3D detection. Uh, camera is effectively 2D, radar is also effectively 2D. Um, put them together, you still don't quite get the 3D, but LiDAR gives you three-dimensional understanding. And what that means is a vehicle can now understand where it's driving and the size, position, and movement of all of the things in its way. And so we can move from guessing at dangerous scenarios and knowing when they're dangerous scenarios and act to avoid them. So we're seeing a demo right now with a, a camera only system in a Tesla versus a system that is LiDAR only. In the real world, do these two things come together to provide redundancy or can you can you survive on, on one versus the other? Sure. Yeah, I think I think in the in the long run there's there's they, they sense things differently and they have overlapping value. My LiDAR is never gonna see a traffic light intentionally, right? I, I don't know if a line is yellow or white uh, on the road. And so those kinds of things, reading signs, cameras will always have value, but so they will eventually come together. Uh, the important thing is that LiDAR gives you that fundamental basis of, again, 3D understanding uh, to be the core uh, decision-making uh, sensor data stream. How does it, how does LiDAR system perform in the real world today? Like what, what sort of level of promises are we getting? What, what's the performance that we see, generally speaking, uh, from these systems in terms of avoiding objects, avoiding pedestrians, avoiding crashes. Yeah, so it, it, it's interesting. I mean, the, the, the historic uh, legacy, as, as it were, of, of automotive safety right now is, is really based uh, around best effort. Um, they're putting technologies into cars and doing what they can to try to save accidents, but they're not focused on the collision avoidance as the starting point. Um, and so what exists today is a lot of things uh, like what you see here today, automatic braking, um, lane corrections, things like that. But um, they're only designed to and industrially tested for a very narrow subset of what is experienced in the real world. So um, what vehicle systems today are, are designed and trained for are generally reasonably well lit scenarios. Relatively large and common objects like an adult pedestrian or a car um, and um, within those bounds systems can do reasonably well if they're designed to do that and high-end luxury cars do a pretty good job um, with those kinds of things but what LiDAR brings to it is the ability to go at night when there is very poor lighting or very confusing lighting um, it allows it to deal with strange things like a toddler in a little push car, um, or a person on a scooter, or lost cargo, um, tires in the road, obstacles, it doesn't matter. We can understand the size, the scale, the position of objects and avoid them. So we're watching a camera only system right now in, in pretty good daylight. It's a little bit evening here in, in Las Vegas, but why is the camera not sensing the what seems yeah. pretty straightforward in terms sure. of a child walking across the road there? Yeah, and, and what you're seeing here is a static scenario. Uh, and this is a big challenge. So the camera is certainly seeing the duck. Uh, the camera sees it. And it's got lots of resolution, pixels. There's enough lighting. You can see it. I can see it. The camera can see it. The problem is assessing that thing as a threat is difficult for camera. It doesn't really know how far away it is. Um, and therefore, the calculation of what's called time to collision is ambiguous. Um, and so all these systems are trained with first principles to not falsely break, right? What you don't want to do in a safety system is create an unsafe scenario by doing this when there is nothing there, because that could cause a rear end collision. And so these are tuned to be very cautious safety systems because of that ambiguity. The camera system sees something there, but it doesn't know how big it is, where it is exactly, because they only have it in 2D, right? And so that's that's why the camera system isn't triggering the brakes because it's too afraid that it may not be collision relevant. So maybe I'm oversimplifying this, but are you saying that uh, for all intents and purposes, they'd rather hit the dummy than have a false braking incident? Absolutely. And 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 it's, it's a reasonable fear, right? Because the, at the end of the day, these features are meant to be under human control, right? These aren't the autonomy features. These are the driver safety features, the, the, the collision avoidance features. And ultimately the person is the responsible driver, right? And so again, 
with technology that is available historically, you do the best you can. And you don't want to cause an accident by breaking. You want to see what you can do to stop the accidents. And so that's the step function that we're talking about here. Because we have the confidence, we can actually start addressing collision avoidance directly without as much concern for the false breaking. Because we're measuring things without the ambiguity of size and position and, and movement. And we know that. Matt, just to kind of go over what we're watching here in the demo that you're showing, there's, there's nothing altered about the systems that we're seeing on these cars in terms of you've turned off certain things or you've turned on certain things that, that's kind of impacting the performance. What, what we're watching is what we get from these cars in the real world from a, something I would go out and buy at a car dealership. Yeah, yeah these, are, these are just standard cars um, using the features that you would use as a standard driver. Um, we're not using any of the more advanced self-driving features. These are human-driven demos. Um, which is what we're comparing to. Right? Luminar is focused on making the human driver safe so that robot drivers can be safe in the future. Um, you know, all the vehicles here, uh, in, in, you know, it's, it's, it's not specific vehicle manufacturers we're targeting. Uh, we do have a Tesla here. We, we you know, use Tesla uh, vehicles a lot because they have an image of um, being very, very good, and they are very good. And this is not, this is an industry problem, right? This is not the only vehicle that will hit these dummies. Um, and so this is why we're showing some of these tests. Perfect. Matt, where do we see your products in the real world and where's that at today? How does that number grow in the not too distant future? Yeah. So we've been deploying for quite a few years um, into the development industry for, for cars, trucks, taxis, helicopters, all kinds of things, right? And right now we're at the transition point into series production. We've started series production with SAIC in China. Um, we'll be moving into uh, Volvo uh, in the end of this year, shortly thereafter Polestar. Uh, beyond that, uh, into uh, Mercedes as well as into Nissan's platform, um, and so our expansion over the next few years is quite aggressive. Um, you know, our, our CEO just uh, in our press release or press uh, event this week um, kind of disclosed we're going to be in the ballpark of a million vehicles on the road um, you know, well before the end of the decade, um, and that's a big deal. Uh, it allows us to start seeing the impacts of this technology soon mass market safety yes. technology that's yeah. proliferating. Absolutely. Right. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, Appreciate it. Happy to be here.